Hello everybody, welcome to our Culture Gaming. I'm Scott, joined by Josh. Hello Scott. Josh, my friend, awesome video game news. Do you like the, the old Mortal Kombat? I bloody do. Do you like the old Jean-Claude Van Damme? I bloody do. Do you like the old Johnny Cage and the I old voice actors? I bloody actors? do. Brilliant, because I'm going to bring them all together. Turns out there's been a tweet from Johnny Cage's voice actor, Andrew Bowen, um, which has now been deleted, which is always the smoking gun whenever someone gets out there and says, I'm involved in a project, and then someone reaches out from said project and says, you weren't supposed to say that yet. Can you get rid of the tweet? <laughs> Um, so we did have, or we do have, a tweet from Andrew Bowen who is uh, showing himself in a video outside of Warner Brothers Studio interspersing himself with footage from Bloodsport, which is an old John claude Van Damme movie, um, including a character that Johnny Cage is very much based on, and the clip that was shown apparently included the word combat. Like I said, it's been deleted, um, but that is one of the most on-the-nose ways for a voice actor in Mortal Kombat to say that they're doing more Mortal Kombat <laughs> stuff. Um, I'll delve into a little bit more of this in regards to why it makes sense for Mortal Kombat 12 to be coming down the line, but what do you think? Dude, I love me some Mortal Kombat. Yes. Mortal Kombat 11 absolutely owned and it is a little bit surprising because Netherrealm usually you know alternates between projects. They do a Mortal Kombat, then they do an Injustice, mm. then they do a Mortal Kombat again. So with that in mind it should be Injustice next. I'm a little bit surprised that they might be jumping straight into Mortal Kombat but hmm. considering how much of a success the last game was it might just make sense to you know keep that momentum going with a brand new game. So the thing is with this um, yeah for the most part for the longest time Netherrealm have gone between the two. There was a whole thing like last year across 2021 about uh, Warner Brothers and Discovery kind of deciding whether or not they're going to merge with each other mm. and that deal is still yet to be locked down. Now there was a whole thing last August 2021 uh, from Jeff Grubb when he was doing his show Grubb Snacks over on Giant Bomb uh, talking about what he'd heard was that Warner Brothers internally didn't want to prioritize Injustice because they might not be able to hold on to the licenses depending on how the merger stuff goes um, as those months rolled out. Now obviously that stuff is still up in the air but the safer bet was to go with Mortal Kombat and right. um, assumedly just because of the, the way that the licenses work they would be able to get that game from front to end, um, rather than something interrupted halfway through. Um, so that was why they decided to shift gears and do Mortal Kombat 12 next. Um, I did pull up, um, well, a whole other thing is um, Jonathan Anderson, who is uh, NetherRealm's uh, senior production designer, um, he also put a tweet up, which again was deleted, um, showing a whole bunch of different Mortal Kombat paraphernalia from pa uh, previous games. I remember this. And if you looked in the corner of the screenshot, you could see a little file extension that said MK12 Master. Now, was that an expert way of teasing us? Maybe. I don't know, but the thing was still deleted. Um, which brings me back around to just talking about Mortal Kombat 11's life cycle, which is to say that the game launched in April 2019. There was the Aftermath DLC in May 2020, um, which came alongside NetherRealm saying the game has been received better than they could have ever hoped for. So they did more story stuff, and there's been a whole bunch of character packs and etc. And then um, in the July 2021, NetherRealm said that DLC has finally, it has to end. We've supported <laughs> this game uh, for a long time. We're going to move on to our next project, which assumedly is Mortal Kombat 12. How, I want to ask, was Go Mortal on. Kombat 11 released three years ago. That doesn't make any sense. Death Stranding's three years ago as well. Don't do this to me <laughs> on film. This will go down forever. This existential <laughs> crisis that I'm having right now is documented. Oh, uh, that seems crisis crazy. on film. <laughs> <laughs> crisis on, on film. film. Yeah. Yeah, this uh, game does make sense in terms of its uh, three-year development cycle, it if does. this is true, Scott Telford. However, I, I do feel like it may be a bit of a shame, because I mm. wanted to see what NetherRealm might have done outside of the Mortal Kombat universe. For as much as I love it, it. We know they can do it. We had yeah. that game supported, like you said, with the DLC in 2020. Mm -hmm. um, for me, I wanted to see whether or not they were making this potential Marvel game that was rumored for a little while, yeah. whether they were going to do Injustice uh, 3 eventually. So while I'm definitely not going to say no to more Mortal Kombat, uh, I'm, I'm a bit disappointed that this deal between Warner Brothers and Discovery might mm. have scuppered some projects that were uh, currently in development. The perhaps. whole thing with Eleven as well, if you play through that game's story, um, the whole point of that game is kind of getting to a point in the overall canon where they can remix and reset a whole bunch of stuff. I guess I'll do spoilers for MK11 because yes. it's been three years. Um, that game ends with uh, Raiden passing over his powers to Liu Kang and making him the next Thunder God, making him the next uh, person in charge of the way that reality itself is going to come back together because by the end of that story, time itself is completely fractured and the person who was looking after that stuff, Kronika, is uh, dead or is just out of the picture altogether. So the way that they did that, it felt like was a way for the designers to go, okay, let's you know find a way to do another 11 whatever installments of Mortal Kombat and remix all the characters but it's going to give us some time off to do X number of other projects like you said there was yeah. a Marvel game and um, that Ed Boon kind of let slip talk 
about when he was in a Game Informer interview uh, where he was being asked about, you know, have Marvel come to you about doing some sort of Injustice-style game for Marvel? And he immediately said yes, and then realized he shouldn't have said yes and went, oh, actually, I can't say anything else. Um, so there was that as a potential. He always said that he would love to do a Marvel fighting game as well. Um, and you had the Injustice stuff, which I used to say that Injustice 2 was the best game that NetherRealm had ever put together yes. until Mortal Kombat 11. I think yes. that is by far the best thing that they've done. Um, but at the same time, it is just that overall conversation around, you know, do you let, how much do you let an IP rest? Um, I think for me, um, I'm a humongous Mortal Kombat fan. It is one of my favorite IPs on Earth. Um, I will take more, and I'm mostly curious in what those um, what the future of the franchise is after the end of MK11. But at the same time, 100%. they have kind of fast-tracked this. And I wonder if they've had to kind of go, oh my God, just sort out the future of it now. Let's just sort of figure out what the hell we were actually teasing at the end of MK11. Yeah, I mean, a couple of things there. One is the place that they left it. You know, they've done mm. this a few times now, I think, across the franchise, you know, over the decades, mm -hmm. where they reached an almost an apocalyptic scale, yes. I would describe it as, where it gets so big, yeah, okay. literally in Mortal Kombat yeah. Apocalypse, where after that they kind of had to soft reboot it by going back in time, and they've done like this time shenanigan, yeah, shall we yeah, say, yeah. a few times now. Hey, and I always wonder, like, how far can you push it? I was kind of lost off in Mortal Kombat X when they jumped kind of so far right. into the future, for instance, and then I was pulled back in with Mortal Kombat 11. But they're always, like, stretching this universe. Yeah, Almost, yeah. like, to breaking point every time. And with the mad ending of 11, mm. it's exciting, but it's also kind of like, how, how much further can you possibly push Well, the thing this? is... First of all, I need to apologize because I called it Mortal Kombat Apocalypse. I led you down a dark trail. It's Mortal Kombat Armageddon, I believe. Oh, of course it is. I know. So I is. hand in my Mortal Kombat card that I acquired back in 1995. It's just not worth my, my uh, not worthy of it anymore. Um, but like you said, that their whole play with Mortal Kombat 9 after, because um, it was midway, then they got acquired by Warner Brothers, then it became uh, the Nether NetherRealm, then they did Mortal Kombat. It was the ninth installment, but it was kind of a soft reboot. And that was their excuse to do the first version of the Timey Wimey stuff where Raiden's consciousness went back in time. Yeah. Let them sort of revisit all the locales and the characters and all the iconography from the original trilogy. And then we got all the way back up to like a new point in time, which was, you can ostensibly say, Mortal Kombat 10. Um, and then 11 was just sort of this great kind of extension of everything um, that felt way more fan focused than 10. You didn't have the whole, the forced combat kids stuff of 10, <laughs> uh, where it was like, everyone's had kids now and this is the next generation. And it just never really worked. Um, this is also the second time that the likes of Ed Boon have talked about trying to reboot Mortal Kombat. We've yeah. been the same set of characters um, for 27 years now. Um, and there was a whole thing during the Gears of War time where they apparently looked at Gears of War and they wanted to do something more like that. They said that mm. that was mind blowing to see Gears of War back in 2006. And that was gonna be a whole thing, um, you know, going forward for Mortal Kombat. That obviously didn't work very well. Um, and they did that um, version of the game didn't come to fruition. It was canned when, when Warner Brothers acquired them. But they have kind of had these conversations on resetting Mortal Kombat for almost three decades now. With that in mind, do you think they will ever spin it off in the same way that they used to? Because Shaolin you and Monks. I are huge fans of Shao Wall and Monks, yep. and I would love to see a sequel to that. Yep. I would even take, and this might be an outrageous Here he is. thing to say, I would take Mortal Kombat versus DC Universe 2, because I really <laughs> like that game, and if they wanted to spin it off again with the new um, experience that they've had, mm. where they've earned over the past few years, maybe they could finally do that, bridge the Mortal Kombat and Injustice worlds, oh. and do another crossover that way. I don't know, for as much as I will take more Mortal Kombat, mm. my question is, yes. at what point does it just become more Mortal Kombat because we well, got to that saturation point around the time of Armageddon and that's why, you know, we got all of these changes mm -hmm. and I don't think they're anywhere near that. I want to clarify that right now, but we, I don't want them to just become the Mortal Kombat studio as well. No, I'm that, and also they're under Warner Brothers. I mean, that was the whole thing with MK11. That game, for as pristine as it is or as pristine as it became, didn't launch in a very fan-focused way. There was a whole thing with that game's challenge towers being overtly annoying and impossible to complete unless you arguably gave in to the microtransaction side of it that would let you buy better items to get through those challenge towers. Um, NetherRealm got out there and apologized. It was a big part of our review that we did back when the game launched because I was like, I need to kick up a stink about this alongside everybody else because I don't want to see Mortal Kombat go down this route where you're paying for certain modifiers to get through challenges, kind of like a mobile game. And um, that felt like the Warner Brothers stink or the Warner Brothers claws getting stuck in after they'd acquired them and done a couple of installments. Um, and I hope that that doesn't become the way that things go where you get like an annual Mortal Kombat um, that is trying to fleece you as much as possible. I will say that in that regard, I think that they did everything right. Like I think that they walked 
a lot of stuff back, they made those challenges a lot fairer, and they did a whole bunch of DLC, and the Aftermath stuff is one of the best story add-ons that you can play. So it, I am fine with Mortal Kombat 12 for now, um, but I get the people who are a bit annoyed about not getting more Injustice, considering how strong that yeah, world totally. is too. Like, there's way more to be done there as well. 100%, and I think ultimately at the end of the day, you know, it's it's still a good outcome. It's still yeah. more Mortal Kombat, and it, hopefully, if they can build upon what they delivered with Mortal Kombat 11, mm. which again, I fully agree is the best game that they've probably ever made, yeah. like, that can only be a good thing. Netherrealm are on such a hot streak right now, in my opinion, despite those few roadblocks that you mentioned there, that whatever they move on to next, I will be definitely, definitely there for. Why is there not a Shaolin Monks remaster? I know this is about Mortal Kombat 12, but I had to buy a Steam Deck. I had to throw half a granny at a certain price tag to get something that will play Shaolin Monks in the modern day that isn't a regular PlayStation 2. Ed, if you were watching this Edward. right now, Edward Boone, this <laughs> is your mother speaking. Please make me Shaolin Monks, and yeah. the next time I see you, I've never seen you, but the next time I see you, I will slip you a crisp £20 note for yes. the which should cover the costs of that game. I it should do. The thing is, Ed Boon has done a, he did a couple of fan polls. He's always on the Twitter going, what do people want to see next? And everyone always says, oh my God, Shaolin Monks, over and over and over again. And he goes, ah, you guys, ah, I got you. And then nothing, nothing ever for <laughs> Mr. Edward Boonson. So I just, just get on, get back on the horse, do Shaolin Monks. I know it's Mortal Kombat 11, that can come, 12 rather, can come later in the year, or 2023, or whatever. Put Shaolin Monks on the PlayStation Premium Service and Game Pass, and let us just have a nice time. Maybe, Why even not? if they just put it as part of Mortal Kombat, Combat 12. Make just, it like a mode inside there. Put that in there and put Combat Cart in there while you're on. I don't and know why. And chess. And chess. Why is there not a Mortal Kombat? Just a whole separate video. Mm. Why is there not a Mortal Kombat little pack in minigame thing, Crash Bash style, with all the different minigames in there? You know what? You make some good points, my friend. I love the good points. Now let us know what you think down in the comments below of my various points and also Mortal Kombat 12. Is it real? Is it not? What do you think of Mortal Kombat 11? For now, I've been Scott from Culture.com. I've been Josh from Culture.com. And we'll catch you next time. Bye bye. Crisis on film. Fatality. <laughs>